Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, BTR. Praise the Lord, Media World, Zoom, Facebook, Instagram. It's always good to have you on with us on this Wednesday night Bible study. My name is Gregory Baptiste from Behold the Lamb Ministries International, where we're changing lives one life at a time. Tonight's message, we want to talk to you tonight about faith, that faith speaks. Faith is the currency of heaven. If you're going to get anything from heaven, you're going to have to use your faith. Faith is the hand that will reach into heaven and bring down whatever it is you need. Hallelujah. And we need faith. The Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we need to use our faith because it's the currency of heaven. Praise the Lord. Are we going into the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter? But before we do that, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of your holy word, open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling. What's the exceeding greatness of your power to us would who believe. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And all the citizens of the kingdom say amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to talk to you in Hebrews 4 and 2, but before I, before I start, let me just say this. We're dealing with a lot in this, in, in this city uh, right now. Uh, and so I want to address the body of Christ to let them know that God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so the word of God says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then when you hear from heaven, I'll forgive your sins and heal your land. And I know that God will heal our land. Praise God. I, I could go back to the ancient days when there was a giant who threatened the whole nation of Israel. And we got a giant, a spirit of murder, a spirit of violence in this city. And the body of Christ needs to rise up because God is about to raise up a day. Praise God. Glory to God. And so you need to prepare yourself. God did not give you a spirit of fear. And I know some of the members of the body of Christ are panicking and they, 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 they really are fearful. But you better rise up because God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a power, love, and a sound mind. So rise up and become all that God said you could be. Because when sin abounds, grace does much more abound. God's about to do the miraculous. There's some mighty things that's about to happen, and you just need to be ready. Hallelujah. Don't get ready. Stay ready. Praise God. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. And we'll start at the first verse. And the message, the title of the message is Faith Speaks. And, and we can tell if you're in faith based on what you say. Because listen, whatever you said yesterday is where you're living today. If you don't like where you are today, then change what you've been saying. Praise God. Because God's word is a creative power. And it, when it's released in the atmosphere, it will change things. Praise God. Hebrews 4 and 1 say, therefore, since a promise remains of entering into his rest, least us fear, least any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as it was to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Praise God. See, we got to mix the word of God with faith. You got to mix God's word with faith. And, and listen, when I, I talked a little bit about the Sunday. I said, me and my wife. She does a lot of baking, and when she bakes, she uses her butter and her eggs, her flour, and she mixes it up until she gets the right texture. Praise God. You got to mix the word of God with faith until you get the right texture. Listen at this. It's not good enough just to say it. 
you you got to say it, you got to meditate on the word until it gets down in your subconscious. It, it becomes a part of who you really are. The Bible says a man thinking in his heart, so is he. He he's talking about down in your subconscious. You know that so I was told that if you do something 21 days, it becomes happy. Well, let me tell you this. If you use the word of God and you confess the word and you get it down in your spirit, it becomes reality to you. you that's what we got to do. We got to deal with it. We got to allow the faith to cut at the unbelief in our hearts so that we can be full of faith. Because let me tell you some faith speaking, praise God. And when you're full of faith, you're going to talk faith. If you're full of fear, you're going to talk fear. Whatever you're full of, you're going to talk about it, praise God. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to mix your faith with the word of God. The way you get it down in your spirit is you got to meditate. You got to meditate. The Bible says meditate means to speak to yourself softly over and over again. Meditation is the vehicle that will take you to your destiny. You, you won't change in your life. You're going to have to meditate. He told Joshua to meditate day and night. Hallelujah, that you might make your ways prosperous and have good success. Joshua was going to make his ways successful by his meditating. You got to meditate on the word of God. Just listen at this. God's word and him are one. When you in fellowship with the word, you in fellowship with Christ. He is the word. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the word. And when we have fellowship in his word, we're really having fellowship with him. You, you got to get in the word so that the word could get in you. you. You can't wait for a Wednesday night Bible study. You can't wait for a Tuesday night fellowship. You got to get in the word for yourself. You, you got to allow the word to build you up and strengthen you in your inner man. Praise God. Listen to this. The Bible says that we need to pray always. Pray without ceasing. Listen, prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. I, I don't know about you, but in this city in New Orleans today, we need some interference. We need God to interfere in the affairs of men. But we also need to take our rightful place as the body of Christ and begin to press in, begin to seek his face, begin to die to our own appetites so that God could be glorified. I'm calling our church to a fast. We, we need to fast and we need to pray. And listen, you can't fast without praying. Because if you fast without praying, you just having a diet. You, you got to fast and pray. So I'm, I'm going to ask the body of Christ that from Friday sunset till Saturday sunset that you only eat salads and fruits. Salads and fruits. Uh, kind of like the Daniel fast. We, we, but I'm not just telling you eat salads and fruits. I'm telling you pray and fast. Pray and fast and ask God to give us a word. Because we, we need a word from God. We need God to move in this city. Uh, we need to pray for our leadership because the enemy has ran rampant in our leadership. Lord, when you see our own leadership going at odds, one another pointing the finger, we need to pray, church. We need to pray. And I, I'm asking you to pray from like I said, Friday at sunset, because that's Sabbath, Friday at sunset before it gets dark till Saturday sunset. I'm going to ask you to be in an attitude of prayer. See, prayer will make the difference. Prayer will change some things. But we've got to humble ourselves and see his face because God is going to be glorified. Hallelujah. And the devil is going to be terrified. Don't allow the fear and the terror that's going on to take you out of your faith. You got to be steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Remember, BTL, we're going to be carrying water this Saturday. Praise God. I believe the men are going to meet at 8 o'clock and everybody else at 9. Is that right? Praise God. So we're going to be carrying water to the multitudes Saturday morning. Water carriers. I'm calling all water carriers to come out because you can't walk on water till you learn how to carry. Praise God. But I, I want you to understand faith is the currency of heaven. And we've got to learn to mix the word with faith if we're going to get the results that God promised. In doing so, we are establishing God's word because He, the way he established it is he calls those things to be not as though they were. We, we got to call for some things. You, you got to say something. You got to say what God said. The word homologia is to speak the same as the word of God. You, you got to say what God is saying. You can't say what you see. You can't say what you've heard. You got to say what he's saying. You know why? Because he watches over his word to perform. There, there's a scripture that says, bring me in remembrance of my word. You think God forgot what he said? Why would he tell you to bring him in remembrance of his word? You know why? Because he wants you to say it. Hallelujah. He wants you to say it. So he could be obligated to, to fulfill it. You know, I've told my children, say, look, I'm going to do this, that, and the other if y'all do this. And, and when they do it, I said, well, I ain't doing it. They said, well, dad, you said you was going to do it. And then I got to honor my word because I said, well, when you bring God in remembrance of his word, he honors his word. As a matter of fact, God says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to blot out your sin, not for your sake, for my sake, because I want to bless you. I want to do some great things in your life. I'm not doing it because of you, though. I'm doing it because of me, for my sake. Because I love you so much, I want the best for you. I want to bless you coming in and going out. And so I'm going to do it because of that. But you bring me in remembrance of my word. And my word is not going to return for it. So when you rehearse my word to me, I'm going to watch over it that it produces exactly what I say. Praise God. But you got to speak his word. You got to declare some things. You, you got to call some things into existence. Faith speaks. I said faith speaks. You got to say some things. You, you got to understand that the word works. Hallelujah. God created everything with his words. And, and then Jesus said, the works I do shall you do also. I say, the works I do shall you do also, and greater works than these, because I go to the Father. We, we as a body don't believe that, because we don't operate like that. If we really believe what Jesus said, we could do what he did. He has given us the power and the creative force of faith to change our, and arrange our, our own lives. But we refuse to use the power of faith. I tell you what, when you tap into this, you can change everything. You can stop some things from going on in your life and you can stall some other stuff up. But you got to understand that God watches over his word to perform it. I say he watches over his word to perform it. We got to learn to use faith with the word of God. Mix it together. I told you the way you get it down in your spirit is by speaking it. The tongue is a mix. You got to say, listen, if you got to say it every day, praise God, until you change the way you believe or the way you've been trained to think. I promise you, if you meditate on the word day and night, it'll become a reality to you. You wake up in the morning, quote the script. I remember at one time in our lives, I would go to bed with the word on all night long. I would go to bed with it on. I would wake up with it on. And my wife said, I wake up in the middle of the night prophesying. <laughs> Praise God. I used to wake up in the night preaching. I said, Lord, have mercy. She said, boy, you had a message. I said, what it was about? 
I was coming out of my spirit. See, it wasn't in my head. You, you can't stand on your head. You, you got to stand on the word of God. You got to get it in your heart. You got to get it down in your spirit where it changes everything. Praise God. See, the word will cut at the unbelief in your heart until light comes. Praise God. Did you hear what I said? The word, when you get the word down in your heart, it'll cut at the unbelief until light comes. And you know what happens when light comes. When light comes, the struggle's over. Praise God. That's what we need. We need light to come. We are called to be light distributors. Praise God. But you can't carry light and still live in darkness. You, you can't carry light and still mingle in the dark world. No, you go come out of the world, the dark world. Come out from amongst them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. And I will be your God and you will be my people. God is calling the body of Christ back to the place where they should have stayed. In his presence. In his presence is fullness of joy. If, you, if, you, if you're troubled by what's going on, it's because you're too far from where he called you to. Come back. Come on back home. Come in the presence of God. Because in his presence is the fullness of joy and peace. A peace that will pass all understanding. You understand that the enemy has raised his nasty head. Because his time is short. Glory to God. So you see all this violence, all this crime is because the devil knows his time is running out. Don't be moved by what you see nor by what you hear. Only be moved by the word of God. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is near. The Bible says, look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Prepare yourself for his coming. Hallelujah. Get busy doing the work of the ministry. People are dying. Babies are dying. People need to hear the word of the Lord. You know, you've been sitting under the word for a long time. It's time you share the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't have to know a bunch of Bible scriptures. You just need to have a revelation of who Jesus really is. You need to be able to share your faith. People need to hear it. Right now, people are afraid. People are fearful. They're scared to go out of their houses because of the violence and the crime. Let me tell you something. God says, I'm going to use you in this hour. Hallelujah. And most of us was created for such a time as this. Set your forehead like flint for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Fill your mouth with good things so your strength may be renewed like a eagle. Hallelujah. You got a word in your mouth. You got a word in your heart. Stir yourself. Hallelujah. Strengthen yourself. Get in this word so the word can get in you. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to Romans 10. Romans the 10 chapter. I, I want to show you something. Romans 10. Romans 10 verse 1 says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. This is Paul. He's saying, my heart's desire is that Israel might be saved. My heart's desire is my loved ones might be saved. My friends might be saved. I don't know about you, but you ought to want your family to be saved. If God saved you, if he sanctified you, if he set you apart, he saved you so that you could save others, so that you could share your faith. Listen to this. He said, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and are seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Christ is the end of righteousness according to the law. 
Because the Bible said, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified or declared righteous. So there's nothing you could actually do to become righteous, but to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the righteousness of man is like filthy rags. There's nothing you could do to earn righteousness. And let me say this. Righteousness is being conformed to God in thought, purpose, will, and action. That's what righteousness is. So you got to submit to the will of God. You got to accept Christ because he's the end of the law concerning righteousness. There's no other way to obtain righteousness but by faith in Christ. Praise God. By the righteousness of faith is near us. It's even in our mouth and in our heart. Listen at this. This is Paul. He says, for Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. And, you know, if you're going to be righteous by the law, he said, if you keep, if there's, there was 613 laws, and he said, if you break one of them, you're guilty of all of them. So no man could really keep the law and be righteous. Uh, but Jesus came to bring an end to the law concerning righteous. And so all we have to do is believe. He says that Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does these things shall live by them. See, you got, to, you got to keep all of them or none of them. If you violate one, you're guilty of them all. But the righteousness of faith speaks. See, I told you faith speaks. It says the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into hell, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? What does the word say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Where is it at? It's in your mouth and in your heart. Praise God. I said it's in your mouth and in your heart. Praise God. So see, if you're going to get it in your heart, you got to get it in your mouth. You got to say something. Faith speaks. I said, faith speaks. If you're going to get it in your heart, you're going to have to say it out your mouth. Giving voice to God's word is a method calling, calling those things to be not as though they were. Yo, you, you need to hear yourself say it. You, you don't need to hear me say it because me saying it ain't going to give you faith. Because your brain needs to know your decision. See, your brain believes everything you say. That's why you've been saying the wrong thing. And you've been getting what you've been saying. You're going to have what you say. The Bible says that life is in the power of the tongue. Them that love it will eat its fruit. You've been eating the fruit that you've been saying. You don't like your fruit? Change what you've been saying. Put your mouth in the word of God. He says the word of faith is in your mouth and then in your heart. You can't get it in your heart if you don't speak it out your mouth. I say you got to use your tongue like a mixer, praise God. You're going to mix it until it drops in your spirit. It becomes a part of who you are, praise God. You got to do it every day until it becomes reality to you. It becomes a part of who you are. It becomes a natural way of living. That's what we want. We want to change you from the way you've been trained to think. You got to renew your mind. See, our problem is the church don't want to pay the price. They, 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 they want the promise, but they don't want to pay the price. See, everything has a price. You know, people say, well, you know, the only thing free is Jesus. That wasn't even free. Because he had the sacrifice given his life. I don't call that free. See, sacrifice is what we need. We need to sacrifice our time. You need, to, you need to fast for a certain amount of time away from the television, away from the Instagram, away from the Facebook page. Give that time to God and watch God produce in your life. But you got to be willing to sacrifice. 
Nobody wants to pay the price, but everybody wants to promise. Nobody wants to apply the principle, but everybody wants access to promise. You can't have the promise until you apply the principle. Remember, the principle is a key that'll unlock the promise. Yeah, he gave us the keys, but, but we don't know what they're for. He, and we don't know how to use them either. But I'm telling you that one of the keys is to get the word in your mouth so that it, it could get in your heart. Because when it gets down in your heart, it becomes easy. Remember, I told you that the word of God will deal with the unbelief in your life until you get light. And when light comes, the struggle is over. Praise God. I, I want you to understand that this is a principle that you got to speak until you get it down in your subconscious. You know, when it says, as a man thinking in his heart, we're not talking about the heart that pumps blood. We're talking about the subconscious. We're talking about the spirit man. When it gets down in your heart, that then it's sealed. It's a done deal, praise God. You got to get it down in your heart. And I can't put it in your heart. I, I can't do that for you. You got to do that. I, I could give you principles. I could give you keys. But you got to be responsible to get it in your heart. That's your job. And I promise you, if you get it down in your heart, it's going to change everything. I say it's going to change everything. Because when you speak the word of God in faith, God's going to hearken to his word. Because he promised that his word will not return void. But it has to be alive to you before you could speak it out to God. When you speak it out your head, it's not really reality. But when you speak it out of your heart, oh my God. Well, I tell you what, things happen. Praise God. Uh, that, that's what we got to do. We got to get it down in our hearts so that we can become effective. So we can change the atmosphere. Things will shift to accommodate you you walk in a different dimension. Praise God. So 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 the enemy will recognize who you are and won't even challenge you. See, the devil is afraid of those who know who they are in Christ. But those that are perpetrators, they're gonna get ran off. See, those with the counterfeit money, they're gonna get ran off. I'm telling you. You know, like the Bible said, that the sons of Ski, they, they came and talking about, we, we bind you and cast you out in the name that called you, the name of Jesus. The devil said, boy, oh, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but you scoundrels going to get whooped tonight. <laughs> you can't come to the devil with that bull crap. You better come with the faith of God. And the only way you're going to get that, you got to spend time on your face, seeking God's presence. The righteous are bold as a lie. The wicked run when nobody's behind. I'm trying to get you ready for this warfare. Listen at this. This is not a physical warfare. There's people dying physically, but this is spiritual warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not called. The mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. We got to prepare ourselves for the battle. You know how we fight our battles? On our knees. Praise God. I say on our knees. We strengthen ourselves on our knees. We say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. The word of God will become a sword in your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm looking forward. God's going to raise up a David to deal with the giant that murder spirit that's in this city, God is going to raise up a David to slay the giant. I know for a fact that David went to get the giant. He didn't wait for the giant to get him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I, I need some soldiers to stand up that are ready to go to war. Praise God. Amen.
too many people are scared. You know, like David, listen, when they were ready to go to war, he told some of them, he said, go back. He remember Gideon, send the fearful back. <laughs> they had 3,000 so many people. He said, 30 something thousand. He said, look, send the ones that are afraid back. He wind up with 300. See, you don't need a whole lot. I see you don't need a whole lot, but you need to have a word from him. Our, our problem, even with our politicians, you know, they just got one hat. You know, politicians need two hats. They need a hat that represents their political office, but they need a hat also that connects them to hell. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if they got two hats, they already hear from God how to deal with the problem that we faced. If not, they need to talk to somebody who got two hats or know the answer to these problems. Because guess what? Whenever there's a problem, there's an answer. And whenever there's a, 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 some kind of famine, God always looks for a joke, always looks for an answer, a David, a, a, a Daniel, praise God. God is looking for a David, praise God, one who will stand up and not be afraid of their faces. Like Jeremiah, he said, don't be afraid of their faces. Hallelujah. You gotta stand up and be calm. It's time that we take our city back. Hallelujah. People can have peace in their own city. Oh man, we got too many people afraid to move in their own city. You got to watch how you move. Praise God. I'm serious. You got to watch how you move. Because if you're moving out of faith, you're moving in fear. Let me tell you what happens. When a dog know that you're afraid of him, he going to run you down. <laughs> That's just the truth. And when the devil knows you're afraid, he's coming to you. Because fear will attract. I said fear will attract the enemy. See, they already know who's afraid and who ain't. They can look in your eyes and see fear. Praise God. You know when they look in eye, my eyes, you know what they see? Fire. Fire. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Let God be, let God arise. Let his enemy be scattered. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm ready to take this city for the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, I'm ready to take this city for the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, I'm not just ready to take the city. I'm ready to die for what I believe. I say, I'm ready to die for what I believe. I'm sealed. Hallelujah. I'm like the lady at the well. I'm healed. I'm filled. And I'm sealed by the Holy Ghost of Christ. Lord, have your way. Raise up people. Raise up people who are not afraid of their face, but willing to deal with the enemy. Hallelujah. We, we're going to take this thing in prayer. Uh, we're going to fast, like I said, Friday, sunset, Saturday. We're going to come off our fast Saturday, and we're going to see the miraculous on Sunday. Praise God. God's going to show up on Sunday and do a mighty work. Amen. And, and we're going to take this city for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I just want you to be encouraged. Do not fret. Hallelujah. Don't be concerned about what's going on. Listen, stop going to the news. The news will create fear in your life. You want news? Get the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the only news you need. There's nothing new under the sun. The Bible says so. He said there's nothing new under the sun. So listen, the righteousness that comes by faith, the only thing you got to do to receive it is you got to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. That's all you got to do. Repent, believe in Jesus, confess him as your Savior. That's the only way you can obtain righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing else will obtain righteousness. Not, not what you do, how many times you did it, fasting. But no, no, no. The only way to get righteous is by accepting the king of righteousness, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and accepting him as your Lord and your Savior. Not just Savior, but Lord and Savior. Lord is absolute Adonai. Lord means master. It means landlord, praise God. It, it means he's overseeing your life that I'm submitting my life to him and I have command that I will follow his lead. Amen. I promise you God has a mighty work that he is about to do in the earth and he is preparing a David to slay a giant Goliath. And if you want to be a part of that David, then you need to begin to humble yourselves and pray and seek his Bring him in remembrance of his word. God doesn't forget. He don't need you to remind him of his word. He's trying to get you in the habit of bringing his word to him because in bringing it to him, you've got to be able to put voice to it. Speak the word of God. Faith speaking. I believe Paul said, therefore, I speak. If you believe, then you will speak. Uh, it ain't good enough to think about it. Too many church members just think about it. No, no, no. You got to be about it. You got to speak it out of your mouth. Faith speaks. Faith will speak and change the atmosphere. Praise God. Too many of us, we're charging our whole families with unbelief. I said we're charging our whole families with unbelief because we're speaking a bunch of unbelief, skepticism, doubt that God will do it or not. If he said it, then it's going to come to pass. I say, if he said it, it's coming to pass. Remember, when you're fellowshipping in the word, you're fellowshipping with Jesus because he is the word in flesh. He was manifest in the flesh. Hallelujah. So when you want to hear a word from God, go to the word of God. That's his word. God is never going to do anything apart from his word. And God is saying, it's time for the church to rise up and become all that God said they would be. He has given us the dominion we have the authority of the believer. Hallelujah. We have the creative force of faith that we can use. Jesus, God said, let there be light. And there was light. You can call for light in the darkness. You can call for deliverance in your loved ones. But you got to get in faith. You got to get in the word. And let the word get in you. My name is Greg Baptiste from Behold the Lamb Ministries International. And we're changing lives, one life at a time. When you speak God's word, you bring him in remembrance of his covenant. And he watches over his word to God. The Bible says, and his eyes are going to and fro throughout the earth, looking for somebody who he can show off on. You like God to show off on you? I said, show off on me, Lord. Have your way in my life so people could see God. Let God be glorified in my life. If you don't know Jesus Christ in the part of your sin, or if you backslid, you're falling away. Maybe you believed on some doctrine that's not biblical. You know, we can get caught up. Let me tell you something. If, if, the, if the person is going to poison your dog, he's not going to give them straight poison. And if a teaching is going to poison you, they're not going to give you straight poison. You ain't that crazy. But they will take some of the biblical principles and put poison on it. And it'll kill you. You go through a slow death. I'm telling you, pay attention to what's going on. And the Bible said, try the word like the mouth tastes meat. 
You know what that means? That means just don't swallow everything you hear me say. And nobody else. You know, when you give me something I've never eaten before, do give me a piece of squirrel on me. I said, man, what is this? He said, squirrel. Squirrel? I said, now eating this squirrel. Man, it tastes, it tastes good. See when I put it in my mouth? Oh, <laughs> it ain't for me. <laughs> I spit it out. That's what you do with the word. If it don't taste right, spit it out. <laughs> if it tastes like poison, 90% chance it is. Praise God. So I'm telling you, the devil wants to kill you. He ain't going to give you straight poison. But he'll give you the word, put a little poison on it. Come on in. Pray if you don't know the Lord, pardon your sin, let's have a word. Pray, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word today. I thank you that I do have faith because he has given every man the measure of faith. I am using my faith right now to trust at Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my personal Savior. I follow you from this day forward. I will serve you. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Satan, I serve you. Notice you are no longer an influence in my life. You have no impact in my household. From this day forward, I am serving God. I'm not only giving him my life as a savior, but even as Lord. Absolute Adonai. We give you glory, praise, and honor for all you're doing. Lord, stir up the people of God. Let them come to their knees and begin to seek your face because this is how we fight our battles on our knees. We're going to take this city for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, as you flood our hearts with light, we'll be like the Spirit. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you want to sow into this ministry, we do have a cash app. It's dollar sign, Behold the Lamb Ministries International. Uh, and you can sow on Give the Five if you want. But everything that you sow will be used to reach the lost at any cost. God uh, bless you. And uh, uh, we have our services at nine o'clock every Sunday morning, 1520 Alva Street, in the night walk between Claiborne and Robinson. We're out by 1030. I promise you, I won't hold you long, but I will make you strong. God bless you.